In this video, we'll be looking into thermal properties of matter. So, temperature is the average kinetic energy of the particles. Internal energy is the total energy of all the particles. The Celsius scale has a two fixed points, and these are 0 degrees Celsius, which is the freezing point of pure water, also known as lower fixed point, and 100 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of pure water, also known as the upper fixed point. Moving on to the calibration process of thermometer, first you put it into 0 degrees Celsius, then 100 degrees Celsius. You mark the lower and upper point, and then you divide the scale into 100 equal division. And now let's talk about the lab thermometer, also known as mercury and glass. When picking a thermometer, it is important to consider the linearity, sensitivity, and range. For example, mercury expands at a steady rate. Using a bigger bulb or narrow bore increases the sensitivity. Using a wider bore or longer stem increases the range. Now let's talk about a thermocouple, which gives an output voltage depending on its temperature. To set up a thermocouple, metal X is joined to Ys or metal Ys to form two junctions. One junction is placed in ice, which is 0 degrees Celsius, and the other junction is placed in the object that is being measured. The greater the voltage, the bigger the difference in temperature between the two junctions. Now let's look at some of its advantage. So it is used to measure high temperature. They have a low thermal capacity so they could heat up and cool down quickly. And lastly, they could be used to measure varying temperature. Our next subtopic is thermal expansion. So solid, liquid and gas expand when they are heated. This is used in bridges and thermal alarms. Solid expands the slowest while gas expands the quickest. Next we have thermal capacity, which is the energy required to raise temperature by a certain amount. Metals have a low thermal capacity because they heat up and cool down quickly, whereas non-metal have a higher thermal capacity because they heat up and cool down slowly. And on that note, let's talk about specific heat capacity, which is the energy required to raise the temperature of 1 kg of substance by 1 degree Celsius. The formula is E equals to mc theta, where E is the energy that is measured in joules, M is the mass which is measured in kilograms, C is the specific heat capacity which is measured in joules per degree Celsius kilograms, and theta is the change in temperature which is measured in degree Celsius. Moving on to our last topic, we have latent heat, and on this heating curve, the latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization are labeled on the diagram. So latent heat is basically the energy required for a substance to change state without the change of temperature. Latent heat of vaporization is the energy required for 1 kg of substance to change state from liquid to gas at its boiling point. Latent heat of fusion is the energy required for 1 kg of substance to change state from solid to liquid at its melting point. The formula for latent heat is E equals to ML and you should also know that power equals to energy over time. As you may know, energy is measured in joules, mass is measured in kilograms, and latent heat of vaporization and fusion is measured in joules per kilogram.